Shalom Israel, Most High and Christ Bless. Um, I'm Captain Shemai. With me I have... Officer Yuri. Shalom. And welcome to another edition of 15 Minutes with the Captains. And today's topic, today's topic is who wrote the Bible? That's an age-old question between unbelievers, atheists, the comedic communities alike. They all, who wrote the Bible? Who wrote the Bible? Well, today you'll find out. All right. So first of all, let's open up with... Um, 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. Mm -hmm. All scripture is given by inspiration of God mm -hmm. and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So all scripture is, is, is given by the inspiration of God. God had to deal with those men who uh, authored his words so other men in these last days can read, okay? Every book on the planet has been authored by someone, okay? They, has, they have an origin. But what, they, what the, the age-old question of who wrote the Bible really means is we don't believe the Bible. That's what it really means because the, the Bible is a book of correction, the Bible is a book of instruction. And what our people don't want to do is be corrected and be instructed. So read that again. All scripture is given by inspiration of God mm -hmm. and is profitable for doctrine, mm -hmm. for reproof, for correction, mm -hmm. for instruction in righteousness. For instructions in righteousness. We love wickedness. Therefore, we don't want to be instructed in righteousness all right let's go to second peter 1 and 20 very quickly second peter 1 and 20 and oftentimes too they don't they don't want to hear the explanation out of the bible they're like oh give me something else give me another another uh, uh reference things of that nature we're gonna deal with that go ahead second peter chapter 1 verse 20 mm -hmm. knowing this first that no prophecy of the scripture mm -hmm. is of any private interpretation. So you don't have uh, the, uh, the, the, what is it? The, um, the Pentecostal believe this. The Jehovah's Witness believe that. The uh, Anglo-Roman Anglo church believes this. There's no private interpretation of the scriptures. There's either right or wrong. Go ahead. For the prophecy came not in old time. By the will of man. So when Moses wrote Genesis, when he wrote Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, it was all through the inspiration of God. God revealed it to him. He wrote it down. This is what many people fail to understand. They think that um, uh, 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 the book, you know, uh, the earth started to crumble like an earthquake. And the book just rose and came up out of the earth. That's not how it happened. Okay? So it didn't come by the will of men. Why is that? Because Moses did not wake up one day and say, hmm, I'm going to write about something that's going to happen thousands of years from now. I'm going to write about the Israelites going into slavery on ships. I'm going to write about them having yokes of iron around their necks, uh, serving their enemies for the want of all things. Their sons and daughters shall be given unto another people. Those that the strangers that are within thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. Wait a minute. I'm going to write all of those things. No man can do that. No man can write what's going to happen thousands of years ago without the one true God. So read that again. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, okay. but holy men of God mm -hmm. spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Moved by the Lord. Go ahead. Chapter two, verse one. Mm -hmm. But there were, all, there, but there were false prophets also among the people. Mm. Okay. Even as there shall be false teachers among you, mm -hmm. who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, mm -hmm. even denying the Lord that bought them. That's the part. Even denying the Lord. So why don't they want scriptures to correct them? Why don't they want instructions in righteousness? Because they deny the Lord. That's what it boils down to, brothers and sisters. I hope you understand that. But here's what I want you to see, too. Another thing they say is King James wrote the Bible. Mm -hmm. We've heard that as well. Who wrote the Bible? King James. King James homosexual. King James this. King... Come on. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the Zondervan's dictionary. It's a dictionary, okay? And we're going to read about the, 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 either the, the author or the authorizer of the Bible. We're going to see if he's the author or the authorizer of the Bible, okay? Read that. King James Version. 47 of the best Hebrew and Greek scholars of the day mm -hmm. were divided into six groups. Mm -hmm. Three for the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Two. I actually, start at the top. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. King James Version. Mm -hmm. When Elizabeth died in 1603, mm -hmm. the crown passed to James the first, mm -hmm. who had been king. James, of, James the first, what? King of England. Go ahead. Who had been king of Scotland, but he was already a king. A lot of times people don't know that. Like, where else was King James a king of? Uh, uh, I don't know, but I know he was a homosexual. How don't you know anything about the man except the rumor that was started by Sir Anthony Weldon? Ah, but go ahead. Who had been king of Scotland for 37 years. Hmm. As he wasn't the new king. Oh, okay. As James the sixth. Uh -huh. For several, several months after he ascended the throne of England, mm -hmm. he authorized... No, he authored. He authorized. Author means you wrote. Authorized means you gave the commission or the permission to put something in writing. I'm confused. So he didn't write the Bible. Go ahead. He authorized a new translation of the Bible. A new translation. Meaning there was one in place before that. Why doesn't anyone ever have an issue with the Bishop's Bible, with the Geneva Bible? It's always with the King James Bible. Right. But there were Bibles in place prior to King James. Huh. Go ahead. A new translation of the Bible to replace the Bishop's Bible. Oh, there was a Bible called the Bishop's Bible. I didn't make that up. Go ahead. 47 of the best Hebrew and Greek scholars uh -huh. of the day uh -huh. were divided into six groups. Mm -hmm. Three for the Old Testament, two for the New, mm -hmm. and one for the Apocrypha. Wait a minute. So the Apocrypha, those 14 missing books belong in the Bible. Go ahead. Two of the groups met at Oxford, two at Cambridge. Wait, Oxbridge, Oxford, Oxford and I, I, I marinated it. Oxford and Cambridge is two of the most prestigious places for literary works today. Go ahead. And two at Westminster. Huh. When a group had completed its task, its work was submitted to 12 men, two from each panel. Hmm. So, long story short, King James did not write the Bible. No, it was commissioned to men moved by the spirit of the Lord to write down the prophecies the Lord gave them to write. Numbers 32 and 2. 33 and 2. Let's go a little further. Numbers 33 and 2. Because sometimes they're like, oh, I don't want to hear the explanation from the Bible. So that's why we had to go into other works to show you. First, our standpoint is always going to be the Bible. That's number one. But we also go into historical facts. We also go into accounts, things of that nature, in order to explain or expound on the word we already stand firm on. Go ahead. Numbers chapter 33, verse 2. Uh -huh. And Moses wrote their goings out according to their journeys by the commandment of the Lord. Hold on. So this is the time when the children of Israel are making the exodus. The Lord commanded Moses to write down their goings into the wilderness, how they walked for 40 years, all the accounts that they saw, the wars that they saw. The, so the Lord told Moses to write that stuff down. Hold on a second. I don't know. Huh. Read it again, please. And Moses wrote their goings out according to their journeys by the commandment of the Lord. So Moses didn't wake up one day and just said, I want to just start writing about uh, uh, the, the, the Red Sea being parted was like a wall before him. By the commandment of the Lord. So the Lord commanded him. He says, every miracle that I do, every plague that I set forth, everything that happens during your lifetime with the children of Israel, I need you to document it. That's what the Lord said. 
huh, let's move forward a little bit. Let's go to Jeremiah 36. Jeremiah chapter 36. And I want verse 4. Jeremiah chapter 36 verse 4. Uh -huh. Then Jeremiah called Baruch the son of Neriah. Uh -huh. And Baruch wrote from the mouth of Jeremiah all the words of the Lord. So the Lord spoke to Jeremiah. And Baruch did what? Then Jeremiah called Baruch the son of Neriah. Uh -huh. And Baruch wrote from the mouth of Jeremiah all the words of the Lord. So in that apocrypha that was translated by those 47 uh, scholars, uh, uh, two groups for the apocrypha, there's a book of Baruch. Baruch was the scribe of Jeremiah. So as the Lord dealt with Jeremiah, Baruch was always with Jeremiah documenting the words of the Lord for Jeremiah. The same way the Lord dealt with Elisha first, then he dealt with Elisha next. Same way he dealt with Jeremiah first, then dealt with Baruch next. But who wrote the Bible? We're reading about those men moved in the spirit of the Lord who wrote down the accounts that the Lord told them to write down about the children of Israel. Go ahead. Of the Lord which he had spoken mm -hmm. unto him mm -hmm. upon a roll of a book. Wait. 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 Hold on. Hold on. So, wait, wait, wait. So the Lord told Jeremiah, Baruch wrote it down in a book? They had books back then? Who would have thought? <laughs> Hold on. I'm, I'm, I don't know what to think anymore. Jump to verse uh, 17. Verse 17. And they asked Baruch, saying, mm -hmm. tell us now, how, does, how didst thou write all these words at his mouth? Mm -hmm. Then Baruch answered them, he pronounced all these words unto me with his mouth, mm -hmm. and I wrote them with ink with, and... Wait, wait. I-N-K. I wrote them with ink. You're telling me they had pens back then, too? Who would have thought? Who would have thunk it? Yes, they had pens. Baruch told the, the mighty men, the princes at the time, he said, listen. He said, how did you write down all of these things that Jeremiah was hearing from the Lord? He said, look. I took a pen and I did what? And I wrote them with ink in the book. I, I don't know. Do we have to even go on? We could, listen, we can do this all day. It could be not, not 50 minutes. It could be 60 minutes with the captains. <laughs> because we can do this all day. Showing that the men of the Lord, in right, the righteous men of the Lord, the Lord commissioned them with a mighty work to write down the accounts in, of prophecy and of history, meaning the things you just dealt with were coming through the um, Red Sea, uh, uh, walking around in the wilderness. He said, document it, document it. The things that I'm showing you was gonna happen, like to the other nations, Israel going back into its rightful place, the Lord gathering us from the four corners of the earth and ruling these nations with a rod of iron, write it down. I need you to write it down. Because guess what? In the last days, some are not going to believe. Some are not going to believe in the last days. So guess what? Even with it written with ink in the book, they still don't believe. The book has been about you, for you. It has been, uh, 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 it's been, it's been your uh, road map since day one. The problem is the person who reintroduced it to you. It was reintroduced to us in slavery. Therefore, we question it. But it was your book way before slavery. It was always your book. Let's, I know I'm going to ch change gears a minute, but let's get that in Psalms uh, 147. 147. It's always been your book. This is the hang-up that many of our people have. So they question the, 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 the origination of the book, the origins of the book. They question the validity of the book because they don't realize it's their book and no one else's. Go ahead. Psalms chapter 147 verse 19. Mm -hmm. He showeth his word unto Jacob. So the word that he showed unto our forefather Jacob is the same word that he asked the prophets before to document everything. We just read that. And only because of 15 minutes, we're going to keep it short. 
he, he the words that he asked the prophets to document, he said, you know what? Those are the words I'm going to show back to you. Because what happened? After uh, uh, some of our forefathers passing, more things would come to pass. So therefore, that's why each prophet had to document. The apostles had to document because the generations to come needed to know what happened in each generation of old. Read that. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He showed his statutes and his judgments, his laws and the penalty for breaking those laws to the children of Israel. So he had to show where his laws were written. Okay? He had to show where it was written. Therefore, when he gave it to the children of Israel, he said, listen, these laws that you're reading right here, if you break them, these are the penalties for breaking those laws. And what, what's one of those penalties? Slavery. Us going into slavery was a penalty for breaking the laws of God. Go ahead. Let's see if he gave it to anyone else. He hath not dealt so with any nation. So you think it's a white man's book. You think um, it, the book doesn't belong to you. But the Bible says he only gave it to the children of Israel and no other nation. You so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, you are the children of Israel. The Bible has only been for you since the very beginning. So you, we question the, 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 the author, we question the origins. No need. It's your book. There are some thieves on the earth who have stole your heritage and have stole your history. But they, those days are done. Right. So real quick, I know they might say, I don't want to hear nothing. I don't want to hear some the truth out of the Bible. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to show you something. And you can even do more research on it. You, can do, you should do more research on it. Okay, here's what I want. We're going to read from the same Zondervan Bible Dictionary about the Moabite stone or the Misha stone. Okay, real quick, the orange. We're going to read quickly. The Moabite stone, an inscribed stone found in Moab and recording Moabite history mm -hmm. in 1868. In 1868. 1868. F. Go F. A. Klein. A German missionary mm -hmm. employed by the Church Missionary Society, mm -hmm. Church of England, was informed by an Arab sheik of a remarkable stone mm -hmm. inscribed with writing and lying at Debon. Mm -hmm. The stone was bluish basalt, neatly cut into a monument about four by two feet mm -hmm. with its upper end curved and a raised rim enclosing an inscription. So it described the, the shape of the stone, okay? Um, go ahead. Um... You can read the, the, high, the yellow. Yes, sir. While the French and the Germans were bargaining with the Turks for the stone. Because the, now these French and German, um, what do you call it, archaeologists wanted this stone because they now figured out the importance of this stone. Go ahead. The Arabs, with oriental acuteness, argued that if the stone as a whole was of value, it would be far more valuable if cut to pieces. So now these Arabs said, oh, it's, the stone is valuable now. Everybody wants it. But if we break it in pieces, it's worth more. Go ahead. So they built a fire around it, mm -hmm. poured cold water over it, and so well nigh destroyed it. Mm -hmm. The fragments of the stone were purchased, pieced together, and are now in the Louvre in Paris. Now, this stone is an archaeological fact. It's the museum it's in houses one of the most priceless paintings on the planet. That's right. This, this same museum that this stone is in right now houses the Mona Lisa. Esau's most prized possession when it comes to art. The Mona Lisa is actually priceless. You can't buy it. You cannot. There's no dollar amount on that Mona Lisa. So you're telling me that this stone that has the inscribing it's going to tell you about, about the Israelites, written by the king of Moab, is in the same museum with the most priceless artwork? Go ahead. 
The writing consisted of 34 lines mm -hmm. written in the Moabite language, mm -hmm. practically a dialect of the Hebrew. So it is a, it is a dialect of Hebrew. Go ahead. By Misha, mm -hmm. king of the Moabites in the time of Ahaziah and Jeraham, uh -huh. the sons of Ahab, uh -huh. and giving his side of the story, recorded in part in 2 Kings 3. Wait a minute. The Moabite king had a stone inscribed with his side of the story between the battle of Moab and Israel, which is chronologized in the book of 2 Kings? So you're telling me they found an artifact that proves the Bible to be true? And that, and that wasn't written by the children of Israel? It was written by another nation? About their account? Because you know there's like two sides to a story. Israel, our story is documented, excuse me, our history is documented in the Bible. The Moabite gave his, story, his side of his story on that stone which was written in a dialect of Hebrew. The stone has been discovered and now put into a museum with other priceless artifacts because the other nations know it to be a fact. Mm -hmm. But we ask, who wrote the Bible? Hmm. <sighs> Last one, Exodus 24 and verse 12. We'll end it there. <sighs> Exodus chapter 24, verse 12. And the Lord said unto Moses, mm -hmm. come up to me in the mount mm -hmm. and be there. Mm -hmm. And I will give thee tables of stone mm -hmm. and a law and commandments which I have written. You see that thing? Ultimately, no matter if no matter the, the, the author, because the Lord chooses who's going to write his word. Ultimately, it's the word of God. It's the word of God. So the, the word that God gave Moses is his words. The, the words that God gave the prophets, the apostles, Christ himself is his words. So you want to know who wrote the Bible? The one true God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Israel. And with that Israel, we say shalom. Shalom. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.